It was always the same things that you hear from all the same teachers every year. It was like, he's got great potential. If he just applied yep. himself, he's funny. He's great to have in class, you know, very smart, intelligent, but just never turns his homework in. I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that was my whole life, you know? All right, Nick, it is great to have you here. How's it going? It is going pretty well. Thank you very much for having me, man. This is cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I'd love to start and hear your, what's your history like with ADHD? When did you first hear, or when did you first start to think that you might have it? And what did that journey look like for you? Yeah, I, probably like a lot of people, I always felt like I was a little bit different. You know, my brother and sister seemed to be cut from the same cloth almost, you know, with certain things. But then uh, when it came to me, uh, either playing and then my imagination, my mom always told me like, oh, your imagination is like crazy, you know? <laughs> like, uh, you know, she always asked me like, do you want to go do commercials or something? And I'm like, I guess, I don't I don't know but it was a lot had to do with my mom seeing stuff on on tv and and uh, connecting it to you know things that i was doing like she would say oh you know you might have this you might have that and then she saw like an oprah episode or something and and she said you know i think you have adhd i was probably in like middle school or something but i'd been struggling with school like my whole <laughs> my whole educational career. It was always the same things that you hear from all the same teachers every year. It was like, uh, you know, he's got great potential uh, if he just applied yep. himself. Uh, if he, uh, you know, he's very, uh, he's funny. He's great to have in class, you know, very smart, intelligent, but just never turns his homework in. I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that was my whole life. You know, and then uh, my mom thought that I might have ADHD, but it was also coupled with like all these years of my mom thinking that she had all these other things too, and and me having then where all of our kid, all of her kids are behavioral oppositional, and so she had a, she started mm. throwing all these labels around really early, so it it wasn't. It didn't catch right in my adolescent mind, right? It wasn't like, oh, right. th this is this is what I am. It was more so like, well, here's another thing my mom thinks is wrong with me. Uh, <laughs> and so it's almost like I just kind of kept that in the back of my mind. And then as as I went through like middle school and uh, in high school, you know, things didn't get any better because I wasn't treating it. I wasn't acknowledging it. I almost failed high school. Uh, <laughs> I almost failed out. I didn't know like until the day of graduation where like we show up with your cap and gown on and, and they give you the diploma and stuff. Uh, uh, if I was graduating and then when my English teacher came up, she goes, you owe me. You know? <laughs> I think I had like a 54 percent, wow. possibly even like switch those numbers to 45. But it was <laughs> not looking good for me. And uh, she just it's almost like she just knew that like this kid can read. He can write. He just doesn't turn anything in, you know, because. Yeah. Cause yeah. My mom even asked me before, I don't even think that there were a lot of uh, schools like this back then, but she was like, if you could just go to a school where she, she was, she loved the hypotheticals, you know, but she, <laughs> if you could just go to a school where you just like talk about the subject that you're discussing, you just have a conversation about it. Would you like that? And I'm like, yeah, that'd be fantastic. Like you want right. to talk to me about, you know, uh, uh, the, the Declaration of Independence instead of just like having me sit and like reading it? Like, come on, like, let's do that instead. But of course, nothing ever came of that because my mom either just, you know, was like, that, that'd be nice. And then just, you know, got distracted herself. Maybe she was ADHD. After high school, I didn't know what to do. So I was like, well, maybe I'll just try this whole college thing. Yeah, let's keep doing the thing that you've been failing at <laughs> the, <laughs> the last 12 years. Just keep right. that ball rolling, bud. Um, so I, uh, you know, I, I totally just did not even go to the first semester. I, I signed up, did all, the, you know, everything I could, and then uh, just didn't. I, I didn't care about the classes. It was like computer mm -hmm. something. Like, it was like beginning computers, which, you know, you could tell how old I am based on the, the <laughs> that, right? It'd be much more mm -hmm. specific nowadays. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I, um, I, I took a few beginning computer classes see? in my day. <laughs> <laughs> this is a mouse. This right. is a keyboard. I, I remember, I remember uh, not to tangent, but I remember one class I was in, we spent the entire week, it was like it was like three days that week, but it was, it was the entire week learning how to create a shortcut on the desktop. And I was like a computer nerd as a kid. So I was like, this is ridiculous. I got it, but I'm done. <laughs> yeah, but there was no way to, at the time, there was no way to like skip those basic classes. Mm -hmm. It was like, yeah, it was it was ridiculous. People had literally had to be taught how to double click a mouse. And oh, yeah. Man, that makes me sound really old, and I regret telling this story now. <laughs> it's okay. We both look yeah, young. On. I Yeah, so I tried classes and stuff intermittently, failing at it miserably. Eventually, I just decided to get a job. Uh, you know, the first job I had was, like, me working at a music store. 
Uh, every mm. single job I've had, that's the other thing, I guess, added to my school stuff, but carried on into my careers, always late. Every single time. Yeah. Like, I just, it, it was, it seemed impossible for me to, like, know how to manage time, which time mm -hmm. is relative, everyone. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> who's right here <laughs> you can't really manage time no i was bad at it I, I setting alarms and all that kind of stuff it wasn't it literally wasn't until my 30s where i had the revelation you know if i plan on leaving 15 minutes before i actually should leave either i leave and get there early or i you know do that whole thing where i open the door leave go outside to the car realize i don't have my keys come back in grab my keys, go back out to the car, then realize I don't have my wallet or my phone, then come back in, can't find my wallet, find my phone. <laughs> Used to have those like little tags where you'd be able to beep it in the, on your phone and then like, oh, yeah. like tell you where your wallet is. I lost that. Uh, you know, there's, <laughs> there's, you know it's, it's all compounding, right? So uh, in, in working and stuff, I held down some jobs. Like a, at the music store, it was very easy and it was very lax. Nobody really cared. <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. when I started, I left there, started working at a print shop, uh, left there. I, st I got actually an internship at a church. I was like playing music and stuff uh, when I was 16. That was another thing I was totally gravitated to that just seemed like, I like locked in on that. Like it just triggered some kind of, you know, probably all the dopamine and stuff that I was getting from like playing. <laughs> I hit this string and it makes a noise. Woo. Uh, right. So I started playing music when I was like 16 and I started like leading the music team and, and whatnot for the junior high and for the high school uh, and eventually kind of uh, playing also like on Sunday mornings and stuff. And so so when I got the job at the music store, I uh, it was like being surrounded by all the things that I loved, right? Like even if, you know, right. nobody was there, you could easily go pick up a guitar or even just look at the guitar pedals or open up some of the booklets or like whatever else. So you're just surrounded by and lessons are going on and there's other musicians there and it was like really cool, right? But then yeah. I, you know, was only making like $400 a month. You know, <laughs> and, uh, right. even at that time, I was like, you know, I'm living at home, 400 bucks. That's fine. But it was gone by like week two, you know, yeah, so yeah. I was like, yeah, I need to make a little more money. So I, at the time I got an internship at a church. So I was able to leave that and get a little bit of money for leading worship and, and uh, playing music and stuff at this church. Uh, but then that was my career path from for like the next, uh, you know, 10 to 12 years it was mm. church work you know i was a youth pastor and a worship pastor and doing some variation of both of those jobs uh, over the course of, of more than a decade and the adhd didn't help there either you know i mean <laughs> the the yeah. things that i was fantastic at in those jobs was like the music aspect of it you know that was the stuff that really drove me and because that was just stuff that I, I loved doing, the singing, the playing, the working with other musicians, the crafting arrangements or songs. We would have like these Easter melodies or medleys that would that would be like, you know, 12 minutes of like six different songs all like weaved into each other and like mm -hmm. whatever else. You know, I'm like, this is the best. Right. But then uh, people are like, do we have practice this week? I don't you know. And Nick hasn't told me anything <laughs> like do we, um, can we? <laughs> You know, or, hey, uh, we need to really schedule that like youth camp trip. I haven't heard anything about it. It's happening in like three weeks. Can we please do? You know, all right, of right. that happening over and over and over. There was even actually not to go back, but there was even a time when I was trying classes in college where my mom uh, got a, an Adderall or maybe like a some kind of stimulant pill that was like Ritalin or something like that from her friend uh, whose son had ADHD, and so mm. she kept trying to push like, hey. And she was like, hey, kid, you want to, you know, you want to try, the, try these drugs? Um, you right. know, all the things that after school specials told us to stay away from. My mom is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she goes, you know, she's trying to get me. And I was like, at that point, I was very embittered toward this idea that something's like wrong with me. I'm like, no, I'm not taking that. Like, I, that, that'd be mm. like admitting, like, what if it does fix it? Probably is what I was thinking, you know, probably not able to articulate that. But uh, eventually she did wear me down enough to where I was just like, fine you know and i took it one day when i went to college and i think that if i was more open to it i would understand like this is is what i'm missing here i think mm. you know there is mm. some aspect of something there but at the time it made it i equated it to feeling like a zombie it felt like yeah i could totally like take notes and listen to the professor at the same time and even like oh i have a little conversation and then come back and you know but she didn't have like I, I mean, to be honest, I was a really compliant child. If she would have probably just taken me to a doctor and been like, prescribe this kid some Ritalin, I probably would have been gone along with it. But it just like the rest of right. the things that my mom would like suggest, all of a sudden they'd lose priority or just disappear or forget about or whatever. Like, oh, it did kind of work.
Yeah, I, I feel like uh, I, feel, I feel like probably getting a proper prescription would maybe have been a little more effective <laughs> yeah. than uh, just uh, getting the pills from the neighbor kid or whatever that you, system you was. Mean, you mean to tell me that, <laughs> that getting a, a properly diagnosed and uh, prescribed medication would be better <laughs> than just, my mom just getting a illicit thought. drugs? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it just seems like maybe that would be uh, a little yeah. bit more uh, helpful for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing the like church music thing. And yeah. music is, I know a lot of people with ADHD really dive into music. I've done it a few <laughs> a few different times. I was way into guitar yeah. uh, years ago. I was, you know, had a band and stuff like that. And oh man, it was so fun to nerd out about the just different guitar pedals and combining, like setting up your whole pedal board and all that. I was mm -hmm. way into that world. And then yeah. more recently, I got into like modular synth and I was like, oh, that is okay. a good way to spend a whole lot of money. <laughs> but is that the yeah, one where so you you're... like unplug the cables and like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's like, like you... the real fancy. You try like, to get it to where it's like. If I turn this like... knob this way, it sounds this way. If I unplug this thing, it sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're like the mad scientist for like music generating itself by going through all these cables interconnected from the different mm -hmm. module. Yeah, it's it's That's intense. Wild. And I got way into it and I learned a ton. And then I hardly produced, like I did like one song almost. Right. Like <laughs> I learned all this stuff and then I kind of got to the point where I'm like, ah, I know enough and this is fun and or it's not fun anymore. I, I kind of, I burned out and just ended up having to sell all my gear because I lost that interest. But there's anyway, that yeah, like so point. There's that that point that you hit with a lot of things, I think, that a lot of ADHD people feel where it's like, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And now I realize that if I'm going to go further in this, then it's going to require a lot more commitment and it's going to be harder and it's going to be more work and whatever else. And then for music, I was able to just, you know, for whatever reason, I think a lot of it had to be like pushed in, you know, uh, because it was like it was part of my job also, but it was also stuff that right. I love doing. So it was this, you know, uh, uh, feedback loop of forcing me to kind of get better. But like, yeah, I think that a lot of people experience that where they hit kind of a wall and they're like, mm, I'm lost interest because it's it's <laughs> yeah. like either no longer because you're doing the same stuff in order to do more stuff. You have to work harder. And then it's like, but do I have motivation to try? <laughs> you know, right, right. I get yeah. that for sure. Yeah. So you were doing that the church uh, music thing for a while. And uh, then where'd you go? Because you're not you're not doing that now. No. Yeah, no. I um. so I was doing that for a while. And then my wife was going to school. Uh, well, I got married when I was 23 uh, my wife was my wife was 21 and we had a baby a year after that so we started knocking out kids left and right every two <laughs> years and ended up with four kids but like in the midst of all that my wife was going to college to be a teacher and so now she's a you know she's been teaching now for like eight years or something like that but she was you know we were trading off and the kids back and forth while she sometimes she was taking the kids to college with her and then uh, mm -hmm. you know sometimes I was you know having them here and taking them with where I was going and having parent my parents take them and it was just crazy but I got a better job uh, a job that paid a lot more than church work church work doesn't pay that much if anybody doesn't yeah. know <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I through the church I actually found some friends and whatnot that uh, they had this sales job that they did and I was you know needing to make a little bit more money and they said well, why don't you come try it out so I got into sales for the like three to four years or something like that and the sales job you know is way, making way more money allowed my my wife and i to like get like child care so we could put the kids you know uh, uh so they're not like either with us while we're working or you know having a grandparent or somebody but with all the church jobs because it was so like intrinsic to things that like triggered my dopamine and, and made me happy or whatever singing and playing songs it was something that i was very passionate about and that i cared a whole lot about and that felt good to do mm -hmm. when i left that to go to sales Right. There was an aspect of sales that I really liked, which was like communicating with people, talking to people, even the challenge of like, you know, turning somebody's opinion around. You know, that's that's it was mm -hmm. it was very uh, intellectually stimulating. When I hit uh, the sales job, I recognized like, oh, man, I'm starting to get busier. I'm, I'm making more money, but also I've got more clients to juggle and I am dropping the ball on some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had health insurance. Uh, my wife, I think, has just started teaching, you know, so we were doing a little bit better in that. So I was like, let's mm -hmm. go get therapy or whatever and I met with um, a guy and and he started me off on some non-stimulant stuff like Wellbutrin and can't even mm -hmm. remember the other things but it was all like 30 days at a pop 30 days 30 days 
And uh, all I remember is like the Wellbutrin gave me a stomachache. Mm. I was like, that's that's not helping at all. Uh, I'm not able to focus any better. I don't really notice a difference. You know, I'm still dropping the ball. And and so I said to him, I was like, look, man, I have never done drugs. I have never, I've never smoked a cigarette. I've never, uh, even my my first alcoholic beverage I had when I was 21, and it was O'Doul's, you know, non-alcoholic <laughs> beer. So I, what are you worried about here? Like, let's. Let's get into the let's let's get into the hard stuff, you know. And I was like, if something's going to work, like work, work, then let's can we try it, please? And he's like, and then he just he wrote me the script and he gave me like five milligrams of Adderall, generic, whatever. And mm -hmm. the next day, I took it at work, and it was like putting glasses on for the first time. Mm -hmm. It was like, mm -hmm. wow. I mean, I remember like writing an email and then something's going on somebody takes a call somebody has a conversation about what happened on the weekend so you know whatever and i'm constant my brain is constantly being pulled to each of those things and it's taking me like 45 minutes to write one email you know <laughs> you just get all kinds of of distractions there but then right. when i had just the five milligrams i was like hey i just wrote an email while that conversation was going and then i turned away from the, after i hit send and then had the conversation and then i went right back to the things that i needed to get doing and i was like mm -hmm. What's happening? It was. It felt like, <laughs> like, uh, like Bradley Cooper and Limitless. You know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. But then I, after a few days of taking that, I was like, okay, so it's not the right dosage because it was feeling like it was like wearing off or it wasn't quite that first nudge. That's something I realized too. Like when you start taking a medication, I think I don't know if this is like medically accurate, but I feel it. Um, I've stopped and started Adderall now at least three or four times because I've just been mm -hmm. like, well, I don't really need this right now. So I figured if I don't have to take it, then maybe I could like hold off or whatever. So I've taken it off and on uh, every, you know, whatever. But each time I've taken it again, I've noticed like the first week or so, or first dose even feels like a spike. It's like a, a mm -hmm. way up their feeling of like, wow, this is like really working. And then it tapers right. off as you start to realize and, and as your body adjusts and, and then you have to get into that equilibrium of where you're not like, you know, biting the inside of your lips and like constantly like, I need to freaking clean something, you know? Uh, <laughs> and you're more so regulated instead of like hopped up or whatever. Or if it's not doing enough, you gotta like bump it up. So I figured out the dosage. It went really, really well, but then it also helped kind of clear my mind of a lot of distractions and whatnot that have had kind of been there and kind of hovering a little bit. So because right, I was right. able to focus, I was kind of able to also focus on myself and what I wanted. And so that kind of made me hate my job. <laughs> I, you know, was showing up late, even, you know, with the Adderall and stuff, uh, I think it was more so just, I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to do it. Ended up getting fired. And mm -hmm. my wife was a full-time teacher at that time. So I was able to basically just kind of stay home for a little bit and see what worked. You know, we trying to figure out, like, she's like, what do you want to do? You know, I kind of had left the church at that point. So I didn't know, you know, I tried, I liked video games. I played some video games. I wrote <laughs> some music, you know, I tried to do like the streaming thing until you figure out that uh, if you uh, stream or you want to be like a streamer, you have to do it like 12 hours a day. <laughs> you know, I'm like, <laughs> right. I'm a dad. I can't, I got four kids, man. Uh, and then yeah. my wife's off work and I'm like, these, these dishes need to get done. Dinner needs to be on the table. So it, it was, you know, and what I realized throughout that process is like, I really like staying home. I really like staying with my kids. Uh, and and helping them out, uh, I like the freedom that it the creative freedom it allowed for me to have when I've got like one baby at home and the rest at school. To where it's like, mm -hmm. dude, there's nap time and I can go like play some music or, or you know, go write something or, or whatever. And that led me to kind of discovering uh, I had done a little bit of improv comedy and stuff with some a buddy of mine. We took some classes and uh, it was really fun. And I was like, this is fun. This is great. This is kind of a performancey thing that, you know, it's not music, mm -hmm. but it's like in front of people and whatever. This is, this is great. And then that led into, oh, these people are all like actors. They're like actors and they're doing like you know, they're auditioning for stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's something I've always kind of wanted to do too, but I never really knew how, right? And it's actually fairly right. simplistic. Uh, you just get headshots, you go on casting websites, and then you submit. Like, that's literally it. Like, there's no process to it that you need to, I mean, you'll figure it out as you go. But so I was like, well, let me do that, right? And I got a friend to take pictures of me and I started putting them mm -hmm. online and uh, got the casting web. Like, where are you guys submitting? Oh, these are the websites. Okay, great. So from improv to submitting for auditions and stuff and then realizing 
realizing that a lot of this industry is, you know, I mean, this the entertainment industry in general is flooded. So you kind of have to diversify, you know, what you're trying to do. So mm -hmm. I then started writing uh, some sketches and stuff like that, getting on sketch teams, doing improv comedy shows. I actually was on, uh, I wrote and um, performed or I collaborated and, and performed on a show called Pretentious About Make Believe, where it was an hour long sketch show at the Second City in Los Angeles. It, it was really my ability to to have like the freedom of like, well, I don't have to have a job right now. My wife's allowing me to like just stay home and take care of the kids and stuff. So we're cool with this situation, but it allowed us to kind of to allowed me to really figure out what it is I want to do. So all these things led into each other. And now I'm pursuing screenwriting and in college, actually, <laughs> uh, which is kind of a, a funny coincidence, as well as yeah. making films, you know, and short films. And I actually have written feature films and uh, I've got a, a short film that is actually funded that I'm going to be shooting hopefully in the next uh, couple months here. That is awesome. So how is uh, college second time around? How's it going this time? Jesse, I'm getting A's, man. That's I'm awesome. getting A's because I care and because it's something that I want. Like, I see myself at the end of the road. I can see myself having, like, a degree, a bachelor's degree in creative writing with an emphasis in screenwriting. And, like, I like that. That's I, I mm -hmm. want to continue to pursue this. It's like when I first discovered music. It was, like, just uh, uh, the thing that I could, like, latch on to and really, uh, you know, even though I'm doing classes that are, like, you know, comp one and, and sociology and... And, you know, whatever else that are kind of boring. I'm doing well in them because I I feel like I'm also learning and it's adding to my writing. It's kind of a weird thing because I'm doing mm -hmm. it all online. Mm -hmm. I'm doing online school, but I'm writing so much because it's online with like the comments that you're supposed to make and, you know, turning in essays and stuff. I'm like, look, if I'm going to do this, then I might as well try and get better at writing in every single writing thing that I have to do. Right. So at the end of the, right. the two and a half years that I have left, I'm going to be a better writer just because I'm doing it, you know, and I, and it's right, something right. that I think I, I think there's three things that like lead to motivation, right? It's like autonomy, relatability, and choice. And I got mm -hmm. all that here and it relates to what I want to do. Uh, it's important to me and I can choose whatever I want to do, you know, with writing. Like I can be a screenwriter, I can write a book or I can, you know, I can create these little worlds uh, mm -hmm. in your mind with words. And it's in, I, I don't know, I just something about that in the same way with music. It was like, I can create this feeling in you by these melodies and these chords and this these dynamics right. of this music and moving it and all that kind of stuff. To me, that was like so uh, uh, intriguing and 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 uh, important about like the human experience. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing when it comes to stories. You know, I discovered telling stories. I'm like, I've always loved telling jokes and telling stories and anecdotes about my own life and whatever else. But then realizing, oh, this, this is like built into us. You know, like the right. need mm -hmm. for story and, and to tell story. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's been going real well. It's, that is awesome. Yeah. So you've you've really kind of found that passion in writing and particularly in film and storytelling through all that. And yeah, I, I, I really find that a lot of people, once they, they kind of connect with that passion, everything really just becomes easier. It doesn't make your ADHD go away or anything, right. yeah. but it does make it a lot easier to find that motivation, which is one of the biggest struggles with ADHD is you just like if something starts to become mundane you're like I can't even get started yeah. getting on that but when you're when you have like this kind of intrinsic interest in the topic in general it gets a lot easier to like yeah I'm like you said I'm going to focus on even the classes that aren't as good because it kind of aligns with my passion here and that's yeah. helping drive me forward and being able to get stuff done yeah. uh, which is yeah that's awesome yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you another thing I know we talked before the show just a little bit about how you know the idea that ADHD comes with friends uh yeah. how it's uh, highly comorbid you know often comes with anxiety and depression and other things and i just yeah i'd love to hear kind of your thoughts on that yeah um something that i discovered with uh you know experimenting with adderall is uh you know it, again I, not recommended by the show yeah. well experimenting <laughs> not exper with a doctor i should say under the guidance of a medical professional uh, yes <laughs> 
Um, but I, that's one thing that I recognize is that like, oh, this is still experimenting with drugs, although I'm doing it like supervised with a medical professional, you know. So even though I got the dosages right and, I, and I'm in an equilibrium place now, there's some side effects with that, such as, you know, a, a taper off at the end of the day where I feel a little on edge, a little a uh, little bit more anxious and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, in some ways, the Adderall, when I said before about how it kind of clears your mind a little bit about these other distractions and then kind of allows you to focus on these things to, you know, fix or whatever. I mean, fix is kind of a weird way to pay it, put it, but address, I guess, you know, yeah. find better ways to cope with. Because, like, mm -hmm. I started going to therapy and realizing uh, that... It's not all ADHD, you know, a lot of this, the the lack of motivation that I'm feeling or the anxiety about, you know, just making a phone call, you know, is anxiety, like it's social anxiety as well as depression. And, you know, right. uh, there's a lot of times I was, you know, uh, a lot of ADHD books talk about how these things are coupled together a lot of times, you know, not only just because of like the biological, neurological aspects of these disorders and learning disabilities and whatnot, but because of a lot of how people with these neurological or neurodivergent tendencies were treated growing up, you know, like mm. the kids who couldn't focus, if you caught yourself in a household that was big on corporal punishment, I mean, you're probably getting spanked a bunch until you can focus, which we mm -hmm. can't. So, right. you know, if that kid isn't being treated for the ADHD, that's just like, I don't know, it's a bad situation overall. So a lot of people with ADHD, I feel like either develop these things or they do come along with the whole neurological part of it because we're, you know, lacking in these certain chemicals in our brains that allow us to focus or help us feel, you know, pleasure when we complete a task even, you know? Is there anything mm -hmm. about like, I don't know, you've done a lot of research on uh, specifically ADHD stuff, but do you know, have you experienced this yourself where you get like into a depression after you complete something? I've definitely heard that happens and is pretty common i for me what i always find is i just never i just never celebrate the win i like get the win and i'm like okay what's next like i just gotta jump <laughs> to the next exciting thing and uh yeah I, can, I never really can just like sit and like bask in the like ah I, that went so well i'm just like okay what's next gotta do the right. next thing gotta jump to the next yeah the next project See, i do or the whatever same thing but i wonder if that's what feeds my depression because i'm just like i just finished this awesome fantastic what's next what do you mean what's next man <laughs> we just finished something would you give me a break <laughs> right uh-huh yeah you know, i get it yeah and i think that a lot of times too is the uh those other things keep us from keep us from addressing the adhd because like we focus on well i'm depressed or whatever yeah but man if you it's like the the three prongs right or the three three-legged chair if you knock one of those out it'll be much easier to address the other ones and that's that's really what i found mm. you know through um copious amounts of therapy you know i've right. been going consistently now for about um six months but much like adderall getting on you know medication and whatnot i've tried it off and on and i think that that's the biggest thing is you really have to find out what works for you you know and and it's all about trying to find that equilibrium of you know you're not going to be fixed right and my therapist told me this uh, at the very beginning of course he was like you know it's not about stopping these thoughts or feelings or stopping how you feel or changing how you feel even it's more so about what do you do when you feel that way you know how do you cope with these thoughts and feelings that do come about and um between medication as well as you know uh depending on what kind of medication you use for you know depression and and whatever else like a lot of people have to get on uh on board with with using multiple medications sometimes so it's it's tough, but at the same time, it's incredibly worth it, man. Like I, I would say that I haven't conquered ADHD for sure, but I am definitely in like the best place that I have ever been um, when it comes to knowing it, understanding it, and being able to respond to all of the stimuli <laughs> and 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 pulls and, and and impulses that come along with it. And it's almost like I've I've learned how to wield it, if you if you will. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That is awesome. Uh, I think that's a great place to uh, wrap up. I want to move on to shiny objects. Shiny objects is a place to talk about something interesting, something whatever shiny object has grabbed your interest lately. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna swerve a little bit just because I've never really been into fitness at all. Right. I, I, if I could just, I was one of those that constantly looked at like those kind of like electroshock things you can put on your abs and be like, does it work though? Like it could work, right? <laughs> like, I just put it in on my muscles and I don't have to work out. Um, right. <laughs> and so, but I even like did sports and stuff in high school. But uh, as soon as I was out of high school, I'm like, I don't care. But I've liked being active, but I've never really been into like 
fitness, right? My buddy bought a gym this year, and it's like the first time that I've consistently been working out only because I want to support him. And I even had this conversation with him the other day. I was like, he's like, well, I don't want you to just come because, like, you know, it's my gym. I'm like, dude, just know that's literally the only reason why I'm going because <laughs> you own it. And, like, if you didn't own this gym, I would not be going to the gym. But, like, he's much bigger into fitness. Like, his wife is a dietitian. And so, you know, I've – I started going just because like also I'm an actor and and you know I want I would like to be alive to see my kids you know and their kids and whatever else so like okay I'm, right. I'm in my late 30s it's about that time that I start <laughs> taking my health seriously I guess and so um a few months before when he was prepping to buy the gym I was like going for walks with my wife I was you know embracing that I may in fact be lactose intolerant and I should cut mm dairy and cheese out of my life, which I've done. So I started making all of these changes to my health, like these little changes that I intended to be lifestyle, like literal lifestyle changes. Like, you know what? I like going mm. for walks with my wife. If we go every day, I, I, I'd love it. You know, an hour, half an hour, it doesn't matter, 20 minutes, whatever it is. I can commit to going to on a, a few walks with my wife a week or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And and I can, I can see us doing that when we're 80, you know? Sure. But then I also said, you know, the lactose intolerant thing. Okay, I just need to stop. That like milk, cheese, butter. I, I need to say goodbye. So I started working out consistently. And to be honest, all these books that I read about ADHD too, they all talk about how, you know, exercise is a massive, massive part of being able to control and, you know, manifest the things you want when it comes to ADHD because it regulates your dopamine, your serotonin, these things all over the place. Uh, right. So all of that together, I'm like, fine. I guess I should be like exercising regularly. And that's really like, I'm like getting buff, dude. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be like braggadocious or anything, but like, hey, did you know that if you consistently exercise and like cut out things that aren't good for you, uh, you'll like get buff and fit? It's crazy. <laughs> but uh, that's that's been the shiny thing for me uh, as of late, because it's something that I've never really cared about. But then I've realized the benefits of it. And I'm like, fine, if you're going to find all the practical and scientific reasons as to why I should do this cool. <laughs> right, right. So my shiny object, uh, not as uh, healthy or whatever for you is that one. But I find, you know, you mentioned you're a writer and I'm I'm writing my book. One of the ways I stay focused, I, I need music to focus like that. Okay. That is really important for me. And but I can't have any lyrics. So I have a lot of different kind of soundtracks I listen to, like like video game scores and movie scores can be really good. Okay. Uh, but one that just came out recently, it's by Ben Prunty. And he's he did the soundtrack to a game called FTL, Faster Than Light, which I have that soundtrack I on vinyl. Love and it's that really good. game. Yes. Yeah. So he did it's the music for that. And I love pixel, that music. Pixel based like space game, right? Yes. That yeah. is the one. Yeah, that game is yeah. fun. Yes. That is a great game. So he just released a new album. I think all of his previous music was for like soundtracks. And this is just a solo album by itself. But it has that same, it's got sort of that like glitchy synthy kind of vibe to it and i'm really digging it it's called transmissions from a hidden world and i'll have links in the show notes for that but yeah i've been really enjoying it lately and that's been my go-to for focusing on the book i just like crank crank a soundtrack like that one and then get to writing and uh, that's how i stay on it that's nice i could never i need i need like absolute silence like ah yeah <laughs> like, like have you heard about that one room that's like supposedly the quietest room in the world and, yeah, like, and people like go feel like they're going insane in yeah, there like you can hear your own like blood moving or whatever <laughs> you know i feel like that's ideal like <laughs> I want that or like I hear about like a, what are those uh, 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 what's where you sub submerge yourself in like salt water and then close the tank or whatever uh, no uh, man what are those things where you leave, and it's just blocks out all sound all light all that I'm like heaven yeah that <laughs> that sounds like my nightmare that is my nightmare right there it's so funny I feel like there's a lot of things like that with ADHD where you're either on one side of the extreme or the other like for me I've got to have constant stimulation like especially audio like I've got to have music or something like that going all the time and yeah I've, I know there's other people like you're saying that like no no, no I can't deal with any of that yeah while silence I'm trying to work is, yeah, yeah yeah silence is golden that is key <laughs> yeah absolutely see the thing is though but when then I try and do like chores around the house and stuff like dishes laundry I have to put a podcast or mm. uh I have to put the ADHD nerds podcast in 
Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, nice. I have to put that or like audiobooks or something like that. Uh, and I find like music also, I like music in the background when I'm like cooking and stuff. But if I'm trying to like get like mundane tasks done, I, I got to have like some pod, somebody talking to me that's like stimulating my, my brain like intellectually in order for my body to do these boring things, you know? Right, so, right. I th- again, I think it's, it's crazy how ADHD manifests in different people's lives and how, oh man, I'm totally opposite from that or different than you, but like, it's similar but also kind of not the same uh so it's it's really cool to to hear that well thank you for uh being here nick where can people follow you if they want to see like movies you're working on or things you're writing and stuff like that awesome uh you can follow me on instagram or twitter at nick nieblas n-i-k-n-i-e-b-l-a-s that's it (laughs) awesome well i'll have links to uh both of those thanks for being here this is great awesome thanks man i appreciate it see you soon